Hello and welcome, I am Arumba. thank you for joining me. Let's play some more Europa Universalis 4. With the extended timeline mod, I have updated it to the newest version, and we're gonna go to the opposite extreme of the last series. Instead of playing in present day with Barack Obama, we're gonna play the Roman Parthian War, and uh, see what happens when you play in the year 58 AD. Now, I could choose the Roman Empire, but they are huge and ridiculous and so I've been looking around the map trying to find somebody that could be interesting to play as and um, these guys are all very very small very weak they're very low on technology and I believe that the Romans are going to kill them and I've never played as a horde so we're going to play as the Sarmatians 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 something like that so we are going to be um, of the nomad group which is unfortunate we have a 35% tech penalty and our monthly power points will be reduced by one. We start off with uh, level six technology compared to the Romans who are also at six. And we have no rulers, so we'll spawn a character. Now what I like about the idea of playing as a horde is that there is no cost for reinforcing. Years of nationalism minus five. And then stability cost modifier minus 10% is fine. But land attrition's down, cavalry combat abilities up, land maintenance is down, land leader shock, very attractive for me. Core creation cost, very attractive for me. And manpower recovery, good. National manpower, good. I just like uh, I just like the horde ideas in general, and uh, yeah, so let's give it a go. So, this mod allows you to play until the year 9999. So we can play for up to like 10,000 years, nearly. And on top of that, in the most recent patch for this mod, they, they the mod maker, overhauled the building system. I don't know if I'd say overhauled, I, that's maybe a bit extreme, but um, there are a number of new trees. You've got government, religion, economy, production, trade, army, manufactory, transportation, and fort level. And some of them have been changed as well, like the government I believe used to have, um, I can't even remember what the, the, the vanilla terms were, but you know, a hospital is definitely not in vanilla EU4. And and that's interesting. Now, you can still only have one category for special buildings, so there is still a choice to be made, but, you know, transportation, that's that's pretty cool. You can build roads. Roads are good. Um, that's all fine. Some of it's still vanilla-esque. Marketplace, trade depot, up to canal. But we've got production, the blacksmith. Workshop, that's fine. Windmill, the factory. Look at that. Local production efficiency plus 50%. And so it also helps to balance the technology levels a bit more. So we're in the year um, 58 right now. We are the Step Nomad government type, which gives us 50% increased national manpower and 50% increased force limits. Uh, we spawned a random ruler, a 336. That's actually quite good. Um, getting a fair, fair number of points. 980%, we're 98 years ahead of time to actually advance our technology. So I think we won't be spending our points on much for a while. Unlock early ideas at administrative tech number 11. Is that what that just said? 12, sorry. I, sometimes I just say the wrong word. <laughs> just just randomly choose the wrong word. Alright. How are we doing on supply? We can't put this army anywhere safely. It is uh, sig just, it's just too large. So we'll split it in half, send half to there and half to there. I did bind in my keyboard shortcuts, better interface. Um, and the better peace screen because those things are all absolutely essential. Our first mission that's available is Conquer Sarai. Um, yeah. Where's that? What now? Sarai. You want me to conquer Sarai. It's a one base tax province. It should be very easy to core. And uh, the enemy is the Alans. They have um, no, no allies. They've already chosen their rival. I need to choose my rival. Can we choose the Alans? That'd be great. Yes, we can. They have 60% less uh, than we do. Sounds like a great rival. <laughs> we'll choose Dacia as well. The other neighbor. Why not? I mean, you can't be friends with your neighbors. It's ridiculous. Let's see how strong they are. Alans have 9,000 men. Wow. Uh, I don't believe we have a CB yet. Oh, we have Tribal Feud that we can use. If we accept that mission, oh, look at that, insult Dacia, we should, we should do that first, for the prestige. I mean, it's, it's always a good idea to insult people. We've sent a letter. 
Let's keep our leader here. We can actually hire a guy. Only 25 points. Very nice. Oh, he's a 0, zero, one, zero. Even better. Uh, we can also hold a festival of 4 Tingri. 18 pounds. We lose 50 of admin power. The Sarmatian, Sarmatians. I'm going to say Sarmatians from now on. We'll get gods pleased until next year. One year. Stability cost goes down. Missionary strength goes up. Morale of armies goes up. I think not. I don't there's really no reason to do that yet. Let's actually keep the army over here then if we're going to go to war. And most of the time we're probably going to spend playing on speed 5 because we have so much time. A new policy has been enacted. They have enacted the offensive policy. How are you act enacting policies already? That doesn't seem reasonable. Do we already have ideas? How can you enact policies without ideas? Interesting. There are policies that don't require idea groups. And you have to have military technology before or below below those levels. That's really cool. Gives us something to spend our points on. That is well thought out. I like that a lot. Diplomats, plus one. Diplomatic relations. Trade efficiency. Uh, land leader shock. And an extra leader without upkeep. Port defense. 5% discipline. Well, land leader shock, definitely. Considering our first guy was a complete dud. I'm just going to probably fire him. We'll keep him around, I guess, but... Oh, gosh. We gotta try again. There we go. A 2-2-1-3. Two, two, that's, that's the one. Here. Let's fire that nonsense guy. And, uh, we have long-time rivals. We might as well embargo them. Before we are at war. But yeah, we're gonna play on speed 5, probably as much as I can afford to, because otherwise... I'm gonna transport ship. Otherwise, uh, this game will take absolutely forever. We have discovered something, gaining prestige. We have gained the Tribal Conquest CB on the Gepids. We've just discovered them. Now, I haven't taken that mission yet. Claim our rival's province of Sarai. Ah, oh, she's... It's too bad you can't just take this one and then take this one. It'll give you... <laughs> it'll give you claim on it directly. So do we want the 25 military power? I kind of wasted some. By not actually having... By rerolling generals a bit. Yeah, it's 25 military power. We could try to reroll a general. All we have to do is wait half a year. Or we could go to war right this second. I think that going to war right this second sounds more fun. So we... <laughs> we gain the claim. <laughs> That's weird. Uh, diplomats, or advisors. We actually make 3.85 ducats in the year 58. That's insane. And these guys, they cost just one ducat a month, just like normal, so... Higher. Definitely. Not gonna hire level 2 or 3, though. Discipline plus 5, yes please. The Roman Empire, my con, we have been warned. Well. Too bad. I'm gonna do it anyway. So conquest, 75, 100, 100, 100. Tribal feud is actually less aggressive expansion. We'll go for it. We'll see if the Romans actually step in. This could be very interesting. Just because they warned us doesn't mean that they're going to do anything about it. An alliance offer from Syra Kess. They are friendly. Enemy of enemy declared war on enemy. They would accept vassalization if we could get them high enough. Yeah, sure, we'll go for that. We'll try to diplomatically bring somebody into the fold. He is not coming from my army. And we're going to find out very soon if the Romans are going to join. And we can call in you to the war. I don't think we really want to. You only have three regiments. It's not a big deal. So I'm thinking um, we will... What kind of pips do we have right now? Look at that. Cavalry combat ability. Awesome. Point one Cavalry shock. Point zero five Infantry shock. These, these guys hardly know even how to shoot at each other. <laughs> they can barely do anything. Um, so let's leave them behind, and uh, let's go form up one big army and go fight him. Oh my con, Roman Empire sent a warning to Alan's. They're just warning everyone, apparently. But not actually making any good on it. Okay, we have a diplomat free. Let's go ahead and issue an embargo over here. Get that uh, power projection back up. Let's see how this combat goes. 
Attacker receives 25% shock damage increase for nomads on planes in home territory. Their leader is a 0 0. Very nice. They took a crossing penalty against our 0 1, but our 2 2 is on the way. How many troops are dying? 14 men. Wow. Seriously, that is, that's not very much combat. <laughs> oh my god, look at the number of people that died was so small. Oh jeez, that's funny. Alright, let's go back to speed four and let's chase them down. Why can we not move? We are we are too low on morale. We don't have enough morale to be able to move. <laughs> What is our morale score? Our morale is uh, 0.6. You need 0.5 minimum just to be able to walk. So if you... Oh, jeez. If you lose a battle... Even if you win the battle, you can't move afterwards. Military access from the Romans? Hell no. You threatened to attack me. Ooh, stack wipe, see? So even though we could only kill, like, one dude, we were able to stack wipe. It was awesome. Uh, let's just split these armies up now. And have one... As soon as it gets enough morale to be able to move. Come on, dude. Move it. <laughs> it can't move. That's great. Oh, carpet siege. <laughs> that is something else. That's funny. Okay, speed five. Let's do this. Do we have uh, the ability to make light ships? Light ships with a speed of seven. That seems fast. pretty fast. It's, it's pretty good. Trade power two. Let's build some called Merchant Ships. They cost 20 pounds, just like normal. Very nice. And uh, we don't need transports, so actually let's get rid of that one. Noble Family Requests Aid. Uh, considering how far ahead of time we are on technology and the fact that I actually think we're going to have nothing to spend points on, I'm just going to deny it. Because I think we're going to have an abundance of Monarch points. I'm not sure, really, how it's going to work out. They should stack wipe. Because they're retreating into an enemy province. So only one of our leaders actually has siege value. Um, I think that we'll take him and leave him behind. But once these other armies get some some military morale, whatever it's called, I'm going to retreat them back so we can avoid attrition. Look at it, we have 20,000 manpower. That seems like an awfully large amount. Uh for this time in the game. Please don't tell me I gave up my siege progress. Oh, and the siege progress is uh, normal, 30 days. The Roman Empire has entered into a royal marriage with their new ally, Bosporus. The Roman Empire is allied with Bosporus. That's not fun. Bastards. Alright, so these guys would accept vassalization. We need to improve relations with them a bit. I wonder if we can full annex these guys. That do It does sound fairly horde-like, I think, to do something like that. Years will fly by playing on speed 5, just so you know. And that's okay. That's to be expected. We've discovered Bryansk. Cool. It's part of, like, Poland or Lithuania or something, isn't it? What year do we actually get artillery, I wonder? Level 52. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so we're going to be playing with just cavalry and infantry for quite a while, it sounds like. Uh, still no level 1 guy there. And we've got full occupation. We can full annex for 72% overextension, 200 diplo points. Um, with the tribal feud CB, we would gain stuff. 33 aggressive expansion. It seems like a good idea, don't you think? Outright annihilating our rival would probably give us a fair bit of power projection as well. All right, we do have a merchant ship. Let's protect trade in the two nodes that make any sense at all. Right now we are collecting from trade in Kiev, and we're also collecting from trade in Crimea. Uh, <clears throat> that's our trade power. There's not a lot of trade here quite yet, but it would probably make sense to protect trade here in Crimea. Let's do that. Gives us a little bonus. So if that's the case, I think we will hold off and uh, 
just wait until we actually have 200 diploma points and we will full annex them. Now, as far as our national focus goes, I'm wondering if we should actually choose anything. Um, our current guy has a lot of military power. We could enact other policies as well, which if we don't do that, I feel like we're probably wasting military, m wasting monarch points. Offensive policy would be good. It'd give us more mobility and it'd allow us to have some extra discipline. And then at the same time, perhaps, perhaps we can do national revolt risk minus one. We might need that for the nationalism that we're going to have to deal with. Well, definitely we want uh, offensive policy, and definitely we want trade efficiency, I think. The policy must be enacted for at least 10 until it can be repealed. So it does still need to be enacted for 10 years at a time, but 10 years is nothing when you can play for 10,000. So... Syracuse has a new ruler. We have 194 Diplo points. Two months to go. One more month. Let's do this. Alright, full annexation. That puts us at 38. 38. And it said that we had a rebellion, but I didn't see one. So now we have to deal with some fairly sizable revolt risk. We have war exhaustion, overextension, and quite a few years of nationalism. Looks like, what, 25 years. Lasts until the year 86. So, if we can, ideally, I'd like to stick the army in a location that they can just all be together. But that looks like it's not going to happen, so we will risk putting an army on each one and hope that we can defend. As far as force summit goes, we've got 35, which seems like a lot. And, uh... These guys are normal price, so why don't we buy a few more? Got six cavalry. Oh, what's the ratio that we can have? You cannot have more than 100% cavalry. Cool, we can have lots of cavalry. Still, I think for the purposes of protecting new newfound territory, we're going to want a bunch more raw infantry. So, okay, cool. I'm going to take a break here. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that this is a series that you're interested in and that you'll follow it with enthusiasm and pride and uh, stuff like that. The Samaritans, not Samaritans, Sarmatians will kill the Roman Empire. Somehow, we will make it so. Thanks for watching everyone, see you soon.